आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा Operation Vijay moved into its sixth week. The tide had turned very clearly in India's favour. Jaswant Singh, undoubtedly India's most successful foreign minister, had charmed every potential Pakistani ally into supporting the Indian stand. General Zinni, Commander in Chief of the United States Central Command, was sent to Islamabad to bring Parvez Musharraf to heel, even as Nawaz Sharif flew to Beijing. to solicit support from Pakistan's closest ally but despite the close relationship between the two neighbors China failed to respond favorably to the Pakistani premier in Washington Gary Ackman co-chairman of the Congressional Caucus on India asked for Pakistan's name to be added to the annual list of state sponsors of terrorism the world bank suspended all payments of loans until the Pakistani army withdrew its forces to the line of control In early July as Nawaz Sharif prepared to travel to Washington the Indian army was winning back peak after peak while the Dras sector had seen significant gains the 70 infantry brigade in Bethalik which had moved in on the 8th of May was still to make serious headway operations in Bethalik sector were distinctive in most ways vis vis the Dras sector The intrusion was the largest both in terms of the area intruded and the strength of the enemy that came in. As per interrogation reports of the POWs captured by us, 6 to 7 companies of the Northern Light Infantry had occupied the sector. The area had the highest heights ranging from 5000 to 5600 meters. The area was the remotest The minimum walk required from the roadhead was 2 to 3 days. And that implied that a person who had once been inducted into the sector had to live off his rucksack with some replenishments for more than a month thereafter. High peaks, jagged ranges, sharp cliffs, enemy infested inhospitable terrain. This was the Bethalic sector. The 70 infantry brigade concentrated on long-term results. Discarding the strategy of frontal assaults where they would have to scale icy peaks in full view of the enemy, they decided to encircle the enemy, cut off their routes of supply from Pakistan, isolate them on heights and then clear the peaks one by one. And once this happened, the Pakistani collapse was swift. Operations in Batalik sector notwithstanding the various constraints were a spectacular success in that the enemy was routed from the sector completely by 8th or 9th of july that is well before the political and the military negotiations had started one of the first success stories of bethalik was that of the 12 jackalai they had been moved to the area in may After completing a successful tenure in Siachen this battalion was on its way to Delhi when orders came reassigning them to the war front Is 50 din ke jang mein hamari battalion ne hamare brigade ke liye na keval Yaldor aur Ganasaur axis ko clear kiya balki Yaldor aur Ganasaur axis ke dono taraf jo sabse zaruri do pahadiyan thi jo ki ब्रिगेड के ऑपरेशंस को आगे नहीं बढ़ने दे रही थी वो दोनों पहाड़ियाँ पॉइंट फाइव टू जीरो थ्री और पॉइंट फोर एट वन टू को हमने कैप्चर किया जिससे कि दुश्मन को एलसी तक खदेड़ा जा सका और ब्रिगेड के आगे के ऑपरेशन सक्सेसफुल हो सके वंस इन बैतालिक दिस यूनिट मूव आउट इन टू एनिमी हेल्थ थेरेटरी कैरिंग लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ एम्यूनेशन बट मीगर रैशन दर्स्ट सक्सेस ऑफ द जैकल आई वॉज एट पॉइंट फाइव टू जीरो थ्री an important feature not only difficult to scale but also very difficult to hold 
Its top was in line of direct enemy fire from point 0.5465. Not only Paltan, but the whole formation, the most important achievement was the point 0.5203 capture. The point 0.5203 capture was the most important our company commander, Major Sanjeev Dutt, and his TOIC captain Amol Kaliya, who has chosen the road, has probably been a chance to come to the road of the road, and that was the reason why, when we reached the top of the post, we didn't know that we had reached the top of the post. But when we reached the top of the post, we didn't know that we had reached the top of the post. After that, we had to kill the people of Pakistan, जबकि कैप्टन अमोल कालिया और उसकी पूरी पार्टी पाकिस्तानी आक्रमण को खदेड़ते हुए इस जंग में शहीद हुए और जो सर्वाइवर दो नीचे आए हैं उनके जो बयान आता है उसके हिसाब से कैप्टन अमोल कालिया पहले अपने पर्सनल वेपन से फायर किया फिर एलएमजी फायरर के घायल होने पर एलएमजी से फायर किया और लास्ट में जब एम फायरर भी दुश्मन की गोली से शहीद हो गया तो उन्होंने खुद एम एम जी फायर करके पाकिस्तान के छः अटैक करने वालों को मार गिराया और इस पूरे ऑपरेशन में हमें 16 पाकिस्तानी लाशें मिली जिससे जाहिर होता है कि कितनी जरूरत थी इस पोस्ट को वापस पकड़ने के लिए पाकिस्तानी को नाउ हैविंग सक्सेसफुली कैप्चर्ड 5203 बलोटियाज मेन सेट द आईज ऑन पॉइंट 4812 Intricate planning followed in an attempt to take the enemy by surprise. After a final meeting with their CEO, the men gathered in an area called the MMG. No medium machine gun. This MMG stood for Masjid Mandir Gurdwara, a combined place of worship for these soldiers of the Jackal Eye who all belong to the Kashmir Valley. 1948, when the Pakistani raiders were in Kashmir, they were in Srinagar. तो शेख अब्दुल्ला के वॉलेंटियर्स और लोकल वॉलेंटियर्स ने जिन ग्रुप्स में वॉलेंटरीली ऑर्गेनाइज होकर इन रेडर्स का मुकाबला किया था ये रेजिमेंट उन्हीं के न्यूक्लियस से 48 के बाद में खड़ी हुई है शुरू में इसको जेंड के मिलिशिया के नाम से जाना जाता था बाद में इसके बहादुरी के कारनामों को देखते हुए इसको रेगुलर आर्मी बना दिया गया और जम्मू एंड कश्मीर लाइट इन्फेंट्री का नाम दिया गया दिस कश्मीरी फोर्स हाफ मुस्लिम एंड हाफ हिंदू एंड सिख आर सन्स ऑफ द सोइल and their motivation in clearing the intruders from Kashmir is very personal. This is precisely the reason that Jack Light troops have commitment to sort out Pakistanis much more than anybody else. This religious composition not only stands firmly against Pakistani propaganda, but gives the rest of the country immense amount of hope about Kashmir. It sets shining examples of brotherhood for all of India as these troops fight together and pray together. This is a real scene when Malvi, Pandaji and Ganthi are doing their own worship and are doing their own worship. They are doing their own worship and are doing their own worship. This is the reason why, before going to any attack, I will tell my young people that the Lord of the Lord, Allah, Ishwar and Vahe Guru can't do any hair on their hair. और अपने बार-बार के एक्शन से पल्टन के जवानों ने इसको प्रूव कर दिखाया है। The inherent faith this unit had in their motherland was India's most obvious defence against Pakistan's chance of jihad। जहाँ तक जिहाद का सवाल है, हमारी मुताबिक किताब, कुरान इकबाक और हदीस के मुताबिक, जिहाद इन्हें उसके साथ हुकुम हुआ है कि सभी लिल्ला, इन्हें अल्लाह की राम में जिहाद करना, उस जिहाद के लिए तब हुकु किसी भी किस्म का कोई खतरा हो, जहाँ तक पाकिस्तान का जहाद के नाम से हमारे इस मुल्क में आने का सवाल है, ये तो एक सांस्कृतिक जंग है और अपने वरासती जंग है, जाति मुफाद है और इसके लिए हम हर हमेशा लड़ने के लिए तैयार रहते हैं। And finally on 4812 when Indian Muslim fought Pakistani Muslim. Religious bigotry gave way to patriotic fervor. जब उनके हम दिल्ली पहुंच गए, तो वो गाली देना शुरू हो गया मैं। मैं बोला अगर आपने माँ का दूध पिया, आप भी मुसलमान हो, हम भी मुसलमान हैं, तो बाहर निकलो, आज देखा जाएगा क्या होगा। The actual assault on 4812 began on the night of the 1st and 2nd of July. 
फोर एट वन टू को कैप्चर करने के लिए हमने पांच कॉलम्स में अटैक प्लान किया था जिसमें कि एक कॉलम का नेतृत्व कैप्टन क्लिफर्ड कर रहे थे पहली रात को एक्शंस में कैप्टन क्लिफर्ड की पार्टी जब दुश्मन के डिफेंसेस के पास पहुंची, तो दुश्मन ने पूरी फायरिंग आरटी मोटर और स्मॉल आर्म्स कैप्टन क्लिफर्ड की पार्टी के पास किया और इस एक्शन में क्लिफर्ड के जब सात जवान शहीद हो गए तब उन्होंने खुद अपना हथगोला निकाल कर दुश्मन के जो एक यू जो फायर कर रही थी उसके अंदर फेंका इसका भी कोई असर न होने पर क्लिफर्ड चलाते हुए दुश्मन की यू का बैरल को खींचने के लिए उस बंकर के सामने पहुंचे और उस बैरल को उन्होंने अपने हाथ से बाहर खींच निकाला और बैरल यू शांत हो गई लेकिन साथ के किसी एक बंकर से एक स्नाइपर की गोली से क्लिफर्ड शहीद हो गए The three companies tasked to capture the top met little resistance in their assault. By the morning of the 2nd of July, the peak was in Indian hands with the tricolor and the flag of 12 Jack alive fluttering proudly on top. इस एक्शन में दुश्मन के 26 जवान शहीद हुए जिनको कि हमने बड़ी बाइज्जत मुस्लिम राइट्स के अनुसार उनको बरियल किया उनका At the height of 4800 meters where breathing is difficult and the terrain is rocky to attempt to bury the enemy is beyond the call of duty it is certainly a lesson in ethics and morality to those officers in that army that returned the bodies of Saurav Kalia and his colleagues to India at 4812 Balotia's men captured a very large number of documents and arms but their most important catch was Nayak Kinayat Ali the first Pakistani prisoner of war captured by the Indian army मुझे अभी भी याद है जब 1 जुलाई को शाम को लगभग सात बजे मेजर दीप पाठक जो कि एक कॉलम के कमांडर थे फोर एट ट्वेंटू को कैप्चर करने के लिए उन्होंने मेरे को खबर दी कि उन्होंने पहला पाकिस्तानी प्रिजनर नायक नायथली पकड़ा है Another very useful seizure was a diary written by a young Pakistani officer Captain Muhammad Mazullah Khan Sumbal. This diary was very useful in providing an insight into the planning and preparation of the Pakistani army. It also revealed a strange coincidence. Ke ek ittefaq ki baat hai ki Siachen Glacier mein Captain Clifford 21000 ki unchai par jis post pe post commander the उस पोस्ट के अपोजिट जो पाकिस्तानी पोस्ट थी उसके ऊपर जो ऑफिसर था वही ऑफिसर पॉइंट फोर एट वन टू पर भी था वहाँ पर कैप्टन क्लिफर्ड ने पाकिस्तानी पोस्ट को काफ़ी नुकसान पहुँचाया चार पाँच महीने के बाद में फिर एक बार फाइव एन एल आई बारह जेक लाई के आमने सामने थी और इसमें मुझे ये कहते हुए फ़क्र हो रहा है कि न केवल एक बार बल्कि दो दो बार फाइव एन को हमने नाकों चने चबाए The whereabouts of the writer are unfortunately not known. We know he had a loving family back home. We know he liked chocolates and cigarettes. We know he visited the site of Nachiketa's air crash. We know he was a young man full of hope and ambition. We don't know if he survived. This officer ne ye diary likhi hai. Uski 1st July ke baad mein entry nahi hai. To ho sakta hai कि फर्स्ट जुलाई के अटैक के बाद में वो इस पोस्ट से निकल गया हो परंतु इस डायरी के हिसाब से जो पोस्ट कमांडर उस टाइम थे कैप्टन कमर उनकी बॉडी 4812 पर उनके बंकर के सामने मिली एक कंपनी कमांडर कैप्टन कमार का लिविंग बंकर जिसकी आप आगे से अगर अभी देखें ये जो दीवार है इस ये उसको रास्ता बिल्कुल पतला है ये दीवार उसको फायर से प्रोटेक्शन देता है ऊपर अगर आप इस छत को देखें कितना मोटा है किसी भी प्रकार के आरटी और मोटर शेल से एकदम से सुरक्षित है इसमें कम से कम भी दो लोग सो सकते हैं अगर आप इस तरफ देखें तो एक और सोने की जगह है जहाँ पे अभी आप स्लीपिंग बैग देख सकते हैं कम से कम तीन लोग इस संघर के अंदर आराम से रह सकते थे चाहे कितना भी आरटी शेलिंग या मोटर शेलिंग होता रहे In other areas avenging Major Sarvanand the one Bihar captured point 4268 and other important features in and around the Jubar Hills complex In Vatali Kialdor sector the turning point came uh, the moment Khalubar ridge was captured 
uh, and uh, the lion's share for capture of Kalu Barraj goes to 111 GR um, under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Lalit Rai. 111 Gurkha is a proud battalion with a history of fierce loyalty and ferocious combat. There are few fighting forces in the world that can match the frenzy of the Gurkhas. To the cries of Jai Ma Kali, these forces were unleashed upon the Pakistanis in Khalubar. These ridge lines of Khalubar, they saw one of the most intensive battles in uh, recent military history, where uh, we had to exchange bullet for bullet with the Pakistanis. And uh, my boys literally had to pull out their khukris to chop the Paki heads. Picked up from Doda, where he was commanding the 17 Russia rifles, Lalit Rai was dropped into the battle zone by Chopper to take over command of the 111 Gorkha. And I had, uh, at that time, no idea who my men were. I had no idea of the terrain. And uh, last and most important of all, I didn't have any idea of the enemy. After a few weeks in the war zone, Lalit Rai volunteered for the capture of Kalubar. Kalubar is a ridgeline which dominates the Nala of uh, Junglungpa. This Junglungpa is the main uh, Nala and the route from where our brigade was uh, maintaining the rest of the troops which are ahead, close to the LC. So it was very important that Kalubar is taken. And also it was visualized that Kalubar is one of the most key features, capturing of which would render the complete uh, defenses redundant as far as the enemy is concerned. On the 2nd of July, Lalit Rai received his marching orders. His units set off the next morning on the 14-hour march to the base of the objective. At approximately 17.30 hours, we came under fire. We thought it was our own fire giving us covering fire. But suddenly there was a puff of dust just next to my feet. I can still got my boots where that bullet has gone through my shoe, that boot. And there was a burst of uh, machine gun fire which actually threw me off balance. And that is the time we realized that these chaps are actually firing on us very effectively. As these brave Gurkhas rallied forward to the cries of Ayo Gurkhali, the enemy fire intensified. There was hell let loose. There were bullets flying everywhere. The artillery fire was most effective. And we were scattered initially. But uh, since the training was good, we rallied everybody together and then the column started moving, advancing ahead. When we were approximately about, uh, say about 600 meters short of the actual target or the objective, that was the time when they started opening up with the AD guns, that is the air defense guns. We later on realized that the number of AD guns they had on us that day was something, four AD guns and eight heavy machine guns and N Plenty of these other rifles, like your G3 rifles, your AK rifles firing onto us. Besides the artillery fire, which was constantly pounding us. One particular area, which is called the bunker area, this was approximately at around uh, 0 to 200 hours. We saw that the fire was most intense from there, and it was doing most damage to us. So that is the time I called uh, Lieutenant Manoj Pandey, and I gave him the task that there are, this is the bunker area. You must take your platoon and silence this bunker. And Manoj Pandey, of course, one of the bravest soldiers I've seen, one of the very brave officers of mine, he took on the task without hesitation. He said it will be done. He took his platoon and went off. Called the pocket edition of the battalion, Manoj Pandey had been nicknamed Pandey Pahalwan by his fellow officers. Always looking for combat, this brave officer had a reputation for drawing fire wherever he went. Popular with his seniors and his colleagues, Young Pandey had a burning ambition to win the nation's highest battle honor. In a short time, he had gained the admiration of his commanding officer. When Colonel Shekhar Pandey was going, going home, when going on pension, uh, when he was retiring, we had a uh, we had a farewell organized for him. That was April. Now in that, uh, we had a mandir, mandir parade organized. All of us went to the mandir, and uh, while entering the mandir. You, are, you remove your shoes. So Colonel Shekhar Padhe removed his DMS boots and went in. After the mandir and the aarti, when he came out, he didn't step into those boots again. He stepped into his uh, brogues. So 
and then he said that these boots uh, he is going to give it to uh, Lieutenant Pandey, and then Pandey said these boots I am going to put on on that day only when I am going to take over the battalion when I am going to be the CEO. That day only I am going to use these boots. Uh, I'll keep them safe, and he always had it with him. But Pandey was not destined to command his own unit. In a display of unrivaled courage, Pandey blew up two bunkers with grenades, shot in his thigh and shoulder. Firing from his personal weapon, he continued to charge. Even as he took a fatal bullet, he watched in satisfaction as the last enemy bunker was destroyed by his grenades. He died with a smile on his lips, winning from a grateful nation its highest military honor, the Param Veer Chakra. Leading the main attack on the ridge, Lalit Rai's troubles were far from over. He realized that taking off Kalubar top before first light was, before we were daylighted, was very, very important. Because had we been daylighted in this particular area, without us reaching the top, we would have been massacred that day. So I understood the criticality and, did, I mean, instead of asking someone else to do it, I thought it was only justified that I, as the commanding officer, must pave the way ahead. So I took my normal uh, QRT, that is my protection platoon, and we fought our way up. We started with about 30 or 35 personnel, but by the time I reached on top, I had just about 12 of them. All the rest had fallen, but others surged ahead. So once on top, that is the time they got slightly shaky. We had barely taken our breath when we were counter-attacked. Now the Kalubar uh, ridge line is such that it can be seen from a long distance. And there's a particular ridge line near uh, Kukarthang, you know, that Bharkar ridge, from where the another officer of mine who has taken position, defensive position, he could see what's happening here. So he would tell me on the radio, sir, now there are 40 boys, 40 Pakistani soldiers who are trying to counterattack you from so and so area. I would ask for RT fire there and then I would also fire there. So that is how I got saved. That was the time I also got a bullet on my knee. And I was asked by the uh, General of Satmani, General Badwar, that I wanted to come down. So understanding the very, very critical situation that I was in, if I would have come down and left that position, we wouldn't have held it. And then my boys would have got slaughtered. So I said, no, there is no question of me coming down. Lalit Roy himself, you know, having been shot in the knee, uh, he refused to be evacuated from Khalubar area. And uh, uh, we had to send a doctor up who uh, took the splinters out there and bandaged his foot. And uh, he limped around to success almost 32 hours or so without food, without a drop of water. Uh, didn't even go out to ease myself for these 30 hours, 32 hours. We kept fighting. My throat was totally parched. I mean, I was totally starved. So were my boys. But we held on and we kept fighting. Now this helped the boys. They rallied down there and under my second in command, then they moved up to a different position just south of us and uh, then it was a virtual route. And once this Khalubar thing was consolidated, then the Pakis ran. They literally ran. You could see them running. Apart from the strategic significance of Khalubar, its capture also led to an enormous amount of recoveries of Pakistani weapons and documents. During uh, this entire operation, what we encountered was an enemy which was well entrenched in Sangars like this. Now, as you can see, there's no effect of small arms fire or even RT splinters on such sangars. What uh, we found or recovered inside these sangars were the fact that they were well stocked with ammunition, well stocked with rations. And uh, what was specially a point which is to be noted is that he had a lot of automatics much more than what is authorized in a regular battalion. When we came in here, uh, there was a lot of fire. Now, uh, we've discovered a lot of ammunition which you can see here. This is the 12.7mm uh, air defense machine gun ammunition. We found uh, food on the boil, which we relished. Fresh mutton, which is really welcome. The place is well stocked 
with rations, a telephone that was still ringing when we came in here. A surprising number of gas masks, one per man. There were about 25 gas masks. British made, lying around here. A very good bulletproof jacket, rucksacks. And the famous stinger. Uh, we saw two stingers being fired from across the uh, valley. And uh, from here, the stinger which we saw had possibly hit the aircraft which Colonel Leader Ahuja was flying. This is the first aircraft to be downed. Uh, didn't you see this uh, stinger being, you know, this stinger rounds going from 5287 that day Ahuja we, was we flying? We saw them being launched from 5287, sir. Correct. From 5287. We were across the valley. We could clearly see 5287, the uh, stinger taking off the streak yeah, you could behind see the streak. it. Correct. Streak behind it and just nudging the aircraft. We thought uh, the stinger had missed. We thought it had missed, but thereafter the aircraft went down. Correct. So it was obvious that uh, it had hit. And this the is other, the one. Uh, the other one. This which is the one that has been fired. You can see that. You can see through. And the loaded one, of course, we have given. The it. loaded one we have given. This is only a uh, fired one. We have the identity card of Pakistan Army. The Frontier Regiment, you can see their pips, that's the captain, the ribbons, formation signs, most important, their pay book. Their pay book. You can open it and show it. Them. Uh, there was another officer at this post, Ishtaq Ahmed, 38 Field Regiment Artillery. A whole lot of letters and so on, a lot of documents. There are a lot of documents which give out the details of number of men, about 120, that this particular post was in charge of. By now it was quite clear that the Kargil fiasco had been masterminded and executed directly by the Pakistani army. But true to their diplomacy of duplicity and deceit, General Parvez Musharraf kept denying his army's role in the intrusions. Occasional patrolling that uh, has taken place uh, because of offensive action by, uh, uh, by the Indians and also attacks and actions on the line of control. That is what got us involved uh, on the line of control. Perhaps the Pakistani general was unaware that Khalubar was many miles away from the LOC. Lalit Rai's victory signaled the collapse of the Pakistanis in the entire sector as the Indian flag reappeared on feature after feature. In the next six days, all of Baithalik came under the sway of the tricolor. But while the entire nation applauded, one home in Lucknow fell silent. The old parents of Manoj Pandey were learning to cope with a personal grief. Oh, <laughs> 